says we're starting the broadcast. Welcome everyone to our November meeting. Um, welcome everyone on the internet. Hi internet. Hi internet. I don't know who's watching today. Color Bars is watching, and Emma Lab logo is watching. Sweet. Um, Jamie, want to get the financials out of the way real quick? Sure. Two things. Financials are posted. I got them done on time. You got questions? Come find me, or post on forums, or email me, or stop me on the internet, or do something mildly awkward. Uh, second thing, until our finances build back up a little bit, we need to very, very carefully consider our expenditures, which is why I didn't immediately say go to several hundred dollars worth of tools that we could actually need. Um, we're going to talk crowdfunding. Mac Cooper had posted about getting an internal crowdfunding thing more formally going. It's on the to-do list. Um, just so the heads up. Still come to me with, oh, I broke this thing. I need a part request. But be aware that several hundred dollars probably isn't going to happen. But it is possible. All things are possible, it's not probable. Well, under the crowd, yeah. Now back to my people. Why wouldn't it be? Well, I meant internally. There are different ways to do it. If you're going to crowdsource something for the lab specifically, make sure you run it through the board or just sit starting a Kickstarter randomly on your own and say, I'm going to buy stuff for the lab. Because, yeah, reasons. Because we have a front place. Internally, um, I can co easily coordinate what we did for the Wii U. Um, when we say, I want to crowdfund tools for the tool wall. Great. I'll collect all that on PayPal for you or buy a check or cash or whatever the heck. And centralize it and take care of it for you. Come see me. Cool. Thanks, Jamie. All right. The fun portion. Who has something they would like to show off or tell us about something cool they've been doing around the lab or not in the lab or seen something cool? Show it to the camera. <laughs> there, the camera's over there. Oh, hi. There's a pretty paperweight. Tell us about your paperweight. Paperweight. So, I, uh, I took a long, very long pole and I stuck it in a thing of molten glass. Molded it in uh, some colorful bits of glass. Stuck it in a hot thing until they melted into a cohesive lump. And then stuck a stick in there and made that little hole and then dipped it there again to cover everything. And then it cooled into the shape. Where can they learn how to do that, Lindsay? <laughs> At Atlantis Art Lab. Where, where is that? That is on Virginia Drive, off the mills, over by downtown. And when do they blow glass? Every Friday night, from like um, six o'clock <laughs> to like ten thirty. So I'm actually going to interject because Coach just said in channel glass blowing is Saturday night this week as a heads up. Oh, oh, good see, to know. Good timing. I think. Did you intend for us to be paperweight when you started? That was the plan. It actually, <laughs> it was supposed to be a bowl. It actually turned out exactly how it was supposed to be because I was going through the tornado shape with a little uh, bubble in the middle. Is that exactly what it is? It's like a. Great. Yeah. 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 Paperweight. Awesome. We're going to pass it around the room. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has done cool things? Mr. Chateau, what's cool? Uh, I'm using my company's uh, software that we need to make the paper stuff. We need to make the NFC cars. Uh, uh, stick. Uh, labels. <laughs> labels uh, for NFC cards. Uh, so I made a template and I'm going to try it out tomorrow. Cool. So, uh, yes, we'll get through soon. Uh, updates on that. If you would like a printed NFC card, uh, it is still a tentative process, but essentially email me your first, la first name, last name, and handle, uh, and a photo that I can use as a headshot, being, you know, noting that it'll be cut down to a size that's like that big. Uh, email it to me with the subject line of ID card, and I will start getting the printed. I have two right now to print. If we can get a whole list of them, we can actually use those in the mail Yep, that would be the hope. Much easier to print. Yeah, that would be the hope. <laughs> and this is because our printer is not so well printing. Yeah, our ID card printer is not worth trying to fight with anymore. 
Um, we don't have one, essentially. So uh, we have solutions, though. So send us your information. We will get ones printed for you and issue new ID cards for the front door if you do not have one. Um, other cool stuff. Mr. Casey, anything cool with biology? <laughs> so, like, on Halloween, is this going to work? That's not going to work. On Halloween, <laughs> that works surprisingly well. <laughs> on Halloween, we got together. Sorry. There's lag. Dang lag. Got together, we swabbed together. <laughs> Some of us sw swabbed so hard we broke our swab. It's probably the most adorable picture I've taken all year. <laughs> we should print it out. And at the end of it, we discovered that all of these swabbies were tasters, so they did not have the mutation in the PTC receptor gene that makes people not taste bitter. Although if you look at that, this guy right here, that's a reference. Dustin looks kind of like the reference, so there's more <laughs> There's more going on with Dustin than meets the eye. Ah, we need to do some more genetic testing with Dustin. So, um, but anyway, we basically, we got expected results, because uh, all of us were pretty sure that we could face the thing, and uh, so it worked. Science happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went to a synthetic biology conference, saw a bunch of cool stuff going on, and we're just Hopefully, collaborating more with some labs across the country to actual science instead of just workshop and stuff. Uh, in the meantime, we've got the workshop coming together and we're going to try to do the thing first. Are you ready to pack some Monsanto seeds? Uh, we have been able to distinguish Monsanto from that. All we need to do is make squared up for so we can have a window here that at some point somebody might turn into a display case. Um, but there'll be a window there so you can actually close the door and have a class in here without you know, hearing people scream about butts in the other room. Are you going to put a blind there? I don't know. Are you going to put a blind there? Oh, Maybe. We're totally good. John Cope's following along. Hopefully not while driving. Hopefully not while driving. <laughs> yeah, probably not. 
Okay. Perfect. Uh, did anyone else do cool things besides me, who I don't want to really talk about myself? Why not? Uh, talk about the house. I know somebody did something cool. Lance put a lot of... What, what happened cool? Coke replaced his Netflix time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used the computer. Bravo. Nice. Now it's a little... More <clears throat> um, so, Mac, Shorka, and I, over the last couple of weeks, disassembled the shell on the Haas. Uh, after I filled it with flood coolant and started running it and realized it leaked everywhere, so we took it all apart and actually sealed it how it was supposed to be from the factory. Um, because when we took it apart originally, apparently we didn't reseal it as well as we had hoped, and it was leaking everywhere. So we took it all apart, resealed it, and then Mac and Chorka also installed some super crazy high power lights inside of it, so you can see it from the moon. Um, it, is, it is very bright inside there now, which is awesome. Um, David Smith and I are working on the first inklings of what might be a class. It'll probably be more of a workshop because it's going to be like three or four people at a time uh, just because of the complexities and how long it'll take to, to get through some of that material. Okay, so if that's it with the cool stuff. I took baby steps towards the Family Space Program. I've been searching out CubeSat funding and got three certified to buy and fire big rockets. Nice. So. Does anyone know what not know what a CubeSat is? No one knows what a CubeSat is. CubeSat is a it's a hundred millimeters on a side. Yes. Ten centimeters. Yes. Ten, 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 ten decimeter. Ten, ten centimeters. It's smaller. Yeah. yeah. It's smaller. Oh yeah. So um, we're poking at the ideas of possibly. Hey, uh, it's, it's Timbo. Uh, come on in. Go on, bike. Yeah. Um, we're looking at the possibility of, of trying to secure some funding to. Build and launch a CubeSat. Which How much does it typically cost to build and launch? One hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So well, okay, so to separate the building and the launching. The launching is an epic crap ton. Yeah. The building is a smaller crap ton. Um, the the, the building, building is, is well within we our reach. The, 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 the building is well within our reach as individuals putting money in. The launching is what I'm working on. Seats are expensive on rockets. Working on it. Jimmy it gets an employee discount, right? Three ninety nine. I don't have notice. I'm gonna find the uh, non-air compartment. Hi. I I was out last month, second day, so the computer is off a little bit. But I've been playing in an audio workshop, and there's also an hour of code next month, and I was hoping to do something with like that. Some people, some people. Maybe some Python and Sounds like fun. I might have to. <laughs> you have to learn Python now or something? Or, uh, our code. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Shelly says that his Kickstarter was funded and there will be a family lab pizza party soon. Oh, yay. <laughs> uh, does anyone have the stats on his Kickstarter by chance? Uh, I don't does anyone not know he, what he was making? No one knows. 190% one one funded. Mini, miniature arcade, 190% funded. So he might be a little crazy over the next couple of weeks. He might be a little busy trying to push stuff out for the holidays. You see him here, like, hey, have you eaten in the last three days? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think he's going to last year. He's still as creative. What? He did that last year, too. Yes. Yeah. He says the pizza is really a bribe to help me ship stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind of We've never done that before. Yeah. Ship out something for the that. holidays and have a bunch of people come in and build something. So you have to do a big picture. Pat. 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 That was fun. Um, cool. All right. Well, I guess we can move along, right? Move along. I you're out of the right place here. So we've got a bunch of classes. Um, so we have a lot of stuff going on. So thank you all for being diligent and creating classes and events and awesome stuff going on. So I'm going to go down the short list which is long. If anyone would like me to explain what's going on, I will. But otherwise, just, just to make you aware, um, we're going to be continuing uh, the bio lab meetings, which is run by Dave Casey. Saturday is from 3 to 5 until 4 a.m. <laughs> um, it starts between 3 and 5 is what he means. And then it just, you know, at some point, finishes in a couple of days. Um, Tonight, actually, after the meeting, there's a Fireside 1. If you're not familiar with Fireside and the game 
uh, Hearthstone. It is essentially a, a card game done digitally. So if you ever play like Magic or something like that, similar kind of play structure, play. but it's all digital. Free to play. Free to play. I imagine there are microtransactions in the game. Yeah. You want to buy micro? Micro. Uh, so that is actually happening right after the meeting here. Um, burning plan. I guess that's burning plan for Burning Man. That's Siraj and Sage. They're working on trying to get a Temple Lab trip to Burning Man next year. So that might be neat stuff. Uh, Willa is teaching Node School on November the 19th. Thursday. That's this Thursday. Wow, this is soon. Come on in. Thursday is huge for us. Um, yeah. Thursday is a big night now. Thursday is the Burning Plan New School Anime Night. Yeah, Thursday is the second Tuesday. <laughs> We're going to have to the window. Wait, not by Thursday. <laughs> Probably this weekend. I won't be here. We'll hang up the tarp. Um, so, uh, Anime Night is also Thursday night. Willa is hosting both Note School and Anime Night, and so we need to see her. Um, Tinker Afternoons, the Airship Edition. Mike Backer will be doing that this Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, they're going to build RC airships that you can take home with you. That's the idea. I don't know what the cost is, but it's, I think, on the um, event break. Uh, you know, he's actually full of hot air, so I'm not really sure uh, if it'll be a real thing or not. Maybe there's two Facebook members. I'm sure it'll it's on our calendar, at the very least. More information, same way. <laughs> um, also, on Saturday, there is a Christmas crafting workshop. I do not know what Tracy has planned, but we will be building Christmas-type crafts. Stick reindeer and, and little popsicle stick reindeer. And Kinder Gardner crafts, so it will be freaking amazing. Um, if you like playing with blue and popsicle sticks, this will be your time to go. Yes. <laughs> is it, uh, was it 5 bucks for materials? Yes. So $5 for materials, all ages welcome. Bring your kids. Uh, bring all your dollars. Your your okay. And now Thanksgiving potluck. Perfect. So there's no longer airship this weekend. It'll be another weekend. Um, they haven't been able to get their first gap according to their Facebook group. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> good to know. Um, going down the list, DC 407 tool and 2600 beta. Mr. Lance and Ms. Willa. Uh, that is November 24th, which is next Tuesday. Um, that's a lot of fun. Hacking, breaking, and learning how to do things ethically. And do locks and handcuffs and yep. that thing. You have to come to find out. They usually shut the door. No, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure I keep losing my place. Linux classes. Mr. Lance is also teaching Linux classes starting again on December the 3rd. Is that correct, Mr. Lance? The next class is not starting. This is oh, continuing. This, this, this is the third, third one. one. We're only four chapters or eight chapters in, which honestly is can you use man? So if you can do that, you're already caught up. You can continue where we're at. And you're following which course material? The LCI, Linux Professional. Well, there you go. Uh, and Mr. Tom has a very important date coming up. Uh, two weekends from now. Two weekends? Three weekends? Oh, it's three. Yeah, I think it's three. Yes, it's three weekends from now. Um, he is having an Organize the Lab party. You know, we've got a lot of stuff. We've actually been really good about cleaning the space uh, as of late. A lot of the stuff out here has been moved out to get rearranged and set up, and it's kind of cluttered, so I think his goal is to start organizing things, putting tools in their places, getting stuff swept and cleaned, right? Yeah, we want to uh, take that weekend get all the labs stripped out and everything in place. Like, if you look, we got drawers all at the different places, and we just stuffed in them. The drawers aren't made. So we're looking at maybe we can search for the drawers, the tools to fit into. So we want to keep them uh, build the illustrator, the layout, the uh, you know cutouts for the tools, uh, and, and for either the laser cutter to cut it or for the CNC machine to cut it, and put those in the drawers. We're going to be laid out and we'll put up some more fresh pleats and all these tech boards and some shelving and the cabinets and all that. So when it's done, we'll be able to see what tools we have, what tools we don't have, and that will spark the idea of the tools for the lab. 
lab and put your hands on any tool and it'll be located exactly where it should be. Yeah. You won't judge us by the content of our wall. Oh, yeah. uh, so in, in the boneyard two years back, they put RFID on every tool. And that's like a very large thing. And so in, in addition to that, if you have not claimed one, I believe we might be out at this point. From one of the goals is to take all of everyone's stuff the stuff you work on at the lab, and you get a bin. It's a gray bin. There's a couple on these brown shelves out here that people have already taken. Um, we will pie the bin for you. You put your name on it, you decorate it, you spray paint it, you paint it rainbow colors, and you, you know, put your stuff in it. And it's yours forever to have it ever and ever. That way, that is your storage. You don't have to leave your parts out on a table surface or in the room or whatever. If you're working on a, a printer, you're working on whatever, you get a box as a member, and that is your storage space. Because that way, it's secure-ish. You have a place to put it when you're done with it, and it goes on a common storage shelf, which are the two brown storage racking that's right out in front of the pallets, or the pallet racks. Um, that should be essentially, when we're all done, all member storage. There should be no other storage up there except for membership bin storage. If you don't have a bin, you would like a bin, and there's not one over there that's empty, see one of the board members and make sure you get a bin. Oh, we will buy you a bin. Sort. It's yours forever. And we'd like to standardize on bins just so that way they stack easier and everything. But this comes see us. That's why it's free. It'll probably be signed that Sunday. It's a member storage across those safe bins. That's exactly what we need. Guys like Tom, visionaries. Yeah, stick with the parts of The cleanup stuff? Yeah. Are the members' councils going to be cleaned up outside? They can eat in here, but uh, they can eat in here. Oh, we were going to eat in here. That's fine. Yeah, they'll no, um, all right. That's fine. Thank you. So, and there's a good chance that they'll have extra. Ah, incentivizing. A little fire. Remind me of some you got a carpet thing. Um, so, what's the section? What are the other two things? So, we've got a lot of stuff that's now overlapping. Just because something's on one day, doesn't mean that we cannot schedule multiple things on the same day now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we can actually have something in here, something out there, and something in the you know other and something in the warehouse all going on. Do we have enough room? I believe we do. So keep going on, um, going through Tom's up. Awesome box. Wow, this is interesting. Um, <laughs> the awesome box. And we'll read this verbatim. I didn't know. Femabot is a mess. Let's clear out the plus pluses. There was talk of doing this at the Christmas party. Cool. Uh, and then it says, maybe at the Christmas off party. It was waiting for your approval. What? <laughs> what was? Maybe it didn't. Wow. Um, Coke's still changing stuff on the fly. I'm a bunch of change. I can't read this. Uh, Tom is doing stuff with cleaning as always. Thank you, Tom. That was just another awesome box thing. Uh, Mike Bakula for taking on the electronics vending machine, and Siraj will be taking on our snacks and balls. We can pick up the vending license for that, so if you oh, need something. I'll, I'll tag on and say Brooks for donating the electronics vending machine to Family Lab. Bakula's yes. going to manage it for us, but it belongs to us now. So the machine belongs to the lab. The content belongs to Bakula. Yeah. Simple so, enough. Yeah. Right? Well, he has a, a business that can handle all of the can't wait whatever. But you will donate back to the lab. Do you have a question? Oh. So that's pretty awesome. We're going to get to see that stock more frequently and more often, which will be sweet. Um, other cool stuff. So updates. We pick the board positions. Um, Lance, myself, Jamie are all the exact same as we were before. Vice President, Treasurer, and President. Um, Mr. John Cope is your new Secretary-in-Chief. 
which is why you screwed up the agenda right now. You wear long pants when you're a field student. No. And you wear short shorts. <laughs> Be lucky no for you. Wearing um, so that means that Mr. What? That means that, that Mr. John Cope will be handling um, the membership paperwork, the voting responsibilities, and our corporate filings, among other duties. So if you have questions about any of that, please see John, and he will relay the information. Uh, in addition to that, does anyone have anything else to talk? Does anyone have anybody who's been awesome to them or done something else that you've seen that we didn't? Acknowledged. I am. Why is I an awesome? Very true. Thank you, Ian. I don't believe he's watching, but we will thank him in spirit. So moving along. Nick's pretty awesome. Who? Nick? What is he doing? What has he been doing? Well, he just cleaned up the whole corner over there in the uh, in there. He insult the air hose. And the reason we do this is we want to like thank you guys for all your hard work, but we don't always remember who did hard stuff because it was a long time ago. Come on. Not directly to the John Lane Street Court, but help me uh with the dresser turning over now. Oh basically throwing the trash, so somebody would actually Nice. John made a dresser do. What? John made a dresser do. Instead of me in a throw We're talking about how awesome you are. Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. Jamie was pretty yeah, awesome. We got a lot of Google Maps. What, what did Jamie do that was pretty awesome? One. <laughs> Which Jamie? This Jamie? That one. What did she do? What did you do? Uh, some four days of my life into working on nonprofit purchasing for lab software. And that's actually on the agenda. Ah. I'll come back to that later. Oh, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, cool stuff. All right, so I'm just going to back down to board positions. So you, these are the official four positions that are on the corporate filings. Now we do have um, additional board members that are. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> we do have additional board members that have other responsibilities. Um, Mr. Mike Bakula um, is. We're starting something new. So I, I've got this down below. I'll, I'll explain it now. So we're going to start doing. We're going to ask people to be points of contact for areas. Essentially, what that means is, let's say, for instance, that we're talking about the machine shop. Um, or maybe we're breaking some smaller pieces. Maybe uh, Nick is the point of contact for um, for the mini mill, the mini lathe, and the uh, the drill presses and saws in that back corner. Maybe he's that point of contact. So you would have him and a backup. Essentially, when there were some breaks. We need something. Um, maybe it's yes. When we get tons of emails asking, "Can you teach me how to 3D print?" That'll go to somebody that's not me. And what it means is, it doesn't mean that you have to teach them. It doesn't mean that you have to clean. It doesn't mean that you have to purchase it. What it means is, you're the person who somebody says that something needs to be done about it, and then you tell us if if you can't handle it yourself. We're, we're just essentially trying to give more power to you guys, so you can all manage the areas you want to manage. Um, we've got a couple ideas that will be, or a couple people we've got in mind for certain areas that we'll be tapping on to see, hey, do you want to take care of this? Like, probably we'll ask Dave, Casey, if you would like to be the point of contact for the bio lab stuff. <laughs> so when someone emails Web Family Lab and says, hi, I'd like to make a strain of Ebola that is not toxic, um, we, will, we will forward that email to Dave, and we will, we, will, we will respond to them appropriately if he chooses to take on a mission. If he cannot, his backup will. Maybe Mike Lou or one of the other guys will say, hey, uh, I'll take on that email. The backup's all the way down. That's all it is, just backups. So what it is is that the board doesn't know everything because it's such a you know, big space now with such a, lot, such a whole bunch of stuff going on. We don't know exactly what is uh, going on with everything all the time, but you guys do. So we're trying to let you have more power to handle certain things. Um, if you have interest in being a point of contact for any of the areas in the lab, from the video game system to the dark room to the bathrooms, <coughs> let us know and we will um, work that out for you. The other thing as part of that is um, the member emails. Are we good on that? Oh, Membership I emails? I need, I need, I need so if you would like a your name at m.famalab.org, 
Please see Lance. We will now give away family email addresses, but we need beta testers. Memory emails. So if you would like a member in email, it's essentially through Gmail. Uh, it will be whatever your name is, so it'll be you know, D Chateau at family at m dot I volunteer to be perfect. So we're gonna yes. Oh, so you're taking the POC thing back in the back. Yeah. Not, um, not all of us talk about it. It's all it's all combined. So essentially Mike Bacula is the point of contact contact. So yeah, okay. yeah. Well, he's the point of contact coordinator. I think you might call him as like the golden social butterfly or something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Essentially, if you would like to be the point of contact, see Mike Bacula. If an email comes in to us at board and it says, Hi, um, do you guys have 3D printers? We're not really sure what a 3D printer is. Can you help us? Maybe it's Iggy is the point of contact for the 3D printers. I have to split it. Maybe it's backups. You know, I don't know. You can't volunteer, you're not a member yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they didn't know they you, you've here. got some time left. Aren't they, are they tenants? They are tenants. Um, we're going to have to start charging your rent. <laughs> um, anyway, we, uh, so maybe maybe that's our point of contact for the 3D printer stuff. Katie is awesome and she can take care of that. So maybe. Maybe. Um, we'll figure that out. Loud. We're going to essentially divvy up emails so that it, things get answered quicker and by the right people. Uh, Dave is still a shop czar. As far as I'm uh, familiar, he will be handling the contact of large maintenance of tools and um, scheduling the right people to do that. Um, John is, wherever John is. Huh? Dave, what? Yeah, hockey. Hockey. David, thanks. What is the many, many uh, John Lamb, wherever he is. Um, he's going to be focusing on, um, okay, he's going to be focusing on, uh, Outreach, member member relations, and uh, fundraising, fundraising and donations. He's got a, a pile of stuff. So the Pocky is also the Arduino and soldering oh, class yes. master. That's true. So Pocky is teaching Arduino and soldering. I think every Pocky week. Really? <laughs> Almost right. every couple of weeks. Okay. Oh, yeah. Awesome box you for stepping up and not making me drive out after we're done Thursday class. So anyway, can I keep going through so we can get down to the? Yeah. <laughs> it's a long list today. Which is good. Um, other stuff. So, holiday party that is coming up. We need to pick a date for the holiday party. I know everyone's companies are probably already scheduling theirs. Traditionally, we have it on a Saturday. Um, I would say Friday night or Saturday night is best, but they are filling up very quickly. We need to pick a date. Um, I would say in the next two days, and, and put it on your schedule. Um, Probably what will happen is that uh, we will come up with two dates and let the membership decide and do some kind of voting, something, maybe just a verbal communication. You have polls in Slack now. Oh, did you install that? Yeah. Um, that's coming up. If you have not been to a family lab holiday party, they are generally not children friendly. Um, I would suggest only mature audiences. Um, eight, old and immature. 18 plus. We need to add some part. I can do that. Well, well, that leads into the back of that. We need a coordinator. And they would take care of the party. Does anyone want to be the point of contact for the Christmas party? Does anyone really want to throw a crazy party? In, in years previous, it was Matt Armstrong. Last year, it was David Moon. They don't know if they can do it this year. So anybody who wants to send it, please. All you have to do is delegate. But it's just somebody to coordinate all that stuff. You don't have to sign up. Let us know. We'll pay you double whatever we're paying you now. Uh, Lance will buy you a balls. Cool. Going down the list. Um, Pat, Pat, Pat that, 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 That's John Cohen. Oh, taking so. notes on. I understand. Jamie. Okay, so this past week there was a lot of discussion about getting a vice licensed copy of Adobe Creative Cloud for the lab after researching up, down, and sideways and figuring out which reseller isn't going to screw us the hardest, um, we're going to be picking up one copy for a lab computer for people to use, hopefully to do lab things, but also to do kind of whatever the hell they want. Um, 310 a year if you want to contribute towards that, I'll love you. You look very concerned. There was a request made, so I did the yeah. research. Cool. Wonderful. Hey. But I'm dead. 
that sounds like I don't think yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a device corporate device. license. Yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. a device that's, non-profit. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. Which is, which is even yeah. better. Yeah. Um, I like our, I the, 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 <laughs> the Department of Education, none of the restrictions. Um, with that said, in the general sense, if there is software you would like to acquire for the lab, um, for <clears throat> lab computers to be on site here, um, we can use the 501c3 to do such things. Um, come talk to me or find something online and say, hey, is this legit? And I will go do the legwork, the paperwork, and figure out if we're going to screw it up. Yeah, generally um, it's a lot less expensive to do it through the, the nonprofit than it is to buy it outright. For, yeah, for us, for Creative Cloud, it's 310 a year instead of 50 bucks a year. So, at any rate, if you have a request, come find me, put me in Slack, email me, whatever, and we'll work with you. Um, if you want to kick in towards it, I'm happy that way too. But We'll have new software soon. Um, cleanliness, it says, uh, awesome, keep me up, good work. Um, and of course, Tom's cleaning party. Uh, point of contact discussion, we already had that. But again, see us if you want to be that person. It's really all of the power, no responsibility. Um, <laughs> that's the that's the we'll give you a ball. Oh, right. So, uh, Mr. John Cope. There are two new members tonight who will be introducing themselves, except for our any of them here. Mac, Mac Rutan, is your new person here? No, here. The other person is um, Carlos. So does anyone know who Carlos is? Does anyone not know who Carlos is? Everyone knows who Carlos is. Perfect. Carlos is a member from Factor. He helped out with our Power Wheels project. He's been here a bunch. He's brought a son. He's been to video game nights. He's helped with build out. He's helped with build out. Um, he did contribute the crowdsourcing for He's been around for like almost eight months, maybe longer, uh, in and out. Anyway, he's, he's a welder. Um, he makes amazing things, and he's also been doing. Um, some stuff here on Sunday is making a product with a group of people doing um, glow in the dark cowboy hats. It's kind of neat. Anyway, so Carlos is a pretty cool guy. I wish I could uh, say more awesome stuff about him, but if anyone else would like to chime in since he's not here to introduce himself, um, feel free to do so. He's legit. Okay. So that is his intro. We will be voting on him and uh, is it Luke? That is name Luke. Yeah. yeah next, um, next month. That is the December vote. Uh, up until then, we encourage both Luke and Carlos to be here as much as possible to uh, for us to know them. Um, moving into who we're voting for this month and people who have been here as much as possible, uh, Katie and Nick actually will be voted on this month. Um, this they did not do an official intro as far as I'm aware, but we had seen them around for like three months. So. If you do not know them, it's been since Baker Fair. However long ago that was. Uh, they pulled me. Huh? They pulled me for a while. They did pull you for a while. Yeah. So they're awesome people. Uh, we've got Paul, uh, Dave Casey, and Lance signed off on him. Uh, and Tim. Tim Bowe. Um, we introduced you last month. Uh, well, I think we did a pretty good job. Does anyone have any questions for Tim since he's here? And we get to berate him for a moment. What, what do you Oh, that we didn't ask him that question. Do you know any good what? Do you know any good sites? Sites. <laughs> they mean websites? I asked archaeological sites and I would be qualified. So, <laughs> any websites. You know any good websites. Um, you're bitter? Nancy, <laughs> <laughs> you could have been to still be the same. Just have a fire on. I, I, I know a very poor site. Uh, jerky.com. It's a plug, but not the right answer. <laughs> Thank you for trying. <laughs> Tell the people who weren't here last month a little bit about what you like to make and what you do for hobbies and what you, you know, hopefully want to accomplish here at the lab. Uh, what I've got me started was learning, um, I wanted to learn Arduino. I wanted to make a, my own custom smoker. So I started uh, researching it, and I learned better by doing instead of reading. So 
just for one second. Hmm. 
Unmute you. All right, so uh, John will tally the votes, and he will let you all know. 24 hours. Within, within 24 hours, if you are members or not, perhaps before that, you will receive an email that says, hi, you're a member, and with further instructions. So thank you guys for coming, and we're going to wrap up the meeting. There is a video game thing happening later, hosted by Mr. Lance. So, JD, JD where he is. Hi, Dave. Um, I am working on the process of trying to put a charter for my gym. Um, That's Gathering and social media? Yeah, social media and all that. And so I don't worry about it. Cool. And if you know anyone who would also be interested, let him know. Even if you're not interested, but you know somebody who is a social media guru. Yeah, I, I tell everyone that, that if you got a question, don't be or post it or post something. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Anybody who's got a lot of good sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of bookmarks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We're going to close the official agenda. Uh, go make cool stuff, and if you're not making cool stuff, play cool video games. And you're making cool yes. stuff, take pictures, and put it on our blog, please. Goodbye, Internet. Oh, we also Bye, have social media. Thank you, everyone. We also have social media that is, like, horribly also, like, photo bear and activity bear.